we will now move to our final speaker this morning. Uh, Myron, please project the, the slide for our final speaker. Myron. So our final speaker is the only uh, PhD student. Um, we'd like to get our young researchers involved in, in, in science and technology and to the uh, scientific community. Um, Alexander Jan Cruz is a graduate of the BS uh, Chemical Engineering Program of UP Diliman. He was the class valedictorian and a graduate, uh, summa cum laude graduate of uh, UP. He is currently a PhD candidate at the Catholic University of uh, Leuven in, in Belgium. He is a junior researcher also at KU uh, Leuven, at DUB, and at uh, IMEC. Uh, he, he worked uh, before at the Shell uh, Philippines, and his research interests are into porous materials chemistry and uh, nanotechnology. Um, he will give us a talk on, on their technology. Um, the title of the presentation is Lab to Fab, a clean room compatible deposition of large area metal organic framework thin films and their applications in uh, electronic devices based on uh, his uh, paper in uh, chemistry of materials and uh, their group's paper on uh, nature communications. Um, welcome, Alex, and uh, take the floor. Hello. Yes. All right. So thank you, Sir Joey, for the introduction and thanks for inviting me. Uh, it's an honor to be here and be one, oh, the only non-PhD holder uh, for, for this parallel session. So uh, I'm starting my presentation here with an icon, a very familiar uh, icon that, that we haven't seen in a very long time. So this is yeah, uh, an airport, yeah, a runway of an airport. And, uh, you may wonder, you sometimes wonder why there are so many dogs in the airport. It's because, uh, yes, uh, dog snows is still one of the most powerful sensors we have, which uh, sniffs into your bags to check whether you have items which are not allowed in your luggage. But what if I tell you that we could actually mimic dog snows in the chemistry lab? And that is in the form of a material, what we call uh, metal organic frameworks or moss. So for today, uh, I'm going to share with you the results of my PhD, part of it, based on the different publications in my research group. And this is the clean room compatible deposition of large area metal organic framework thin films and their applications in electronic devices. Uh, first of all, yes, I work here in uh, the K. Lubin Chemintech and uh, the industrial Valorization of my project is carried out at IMEC, which is a world leading nano electronics research institute. So, we have production facilities to carry out um, high throughput uh, depositions and, and different fabrication for semiconductor industry. Uh, I work with uh, Professor Amulut, so, he's a young professor. Uh, we're a team of 20 researchers, and we work on additive manufacturing and metal organic frameworks. What are metal organic frameworks and why are they interesting? So for, for here, for this presentation, I would call this MOFs. So MOFs are very interesting because they combine uh, the different uh, uh, yeah, properties of metal and organic materials. So it's both inorganic and organic and we have the best of both worlds. So one of the most interesting properties of metal organic frameworks is they are very porous, so like a sponge. So I think one of the uh, record-breaking surface areas is uh, could be uh, uh, we could make an, an equivalent of this. Uh, several grams of this material it can actually be equals to be equal to tens of of tens of football fields. So that 
big surface area. And of course, uh, it's like zeolite in a way, but the striking difference is that we have the organic component, which, uh, which uh, allows us to have a very, very uh, flexible synthetic tunability. So we could alter the organic part to have different pore sizes and chemical functionality. While not all moths are crystalline, uh, the crystallinity is what I'm interested in, the order of this porous materials. So for, for my research, I'm only working with porous and crystalline metal organic frameworks. So having said that, uh, we've had a lot of applications in the past, such as for scaffolds and supports for catalysts and adsorbents, and very recently on uh, sensors and dielectrics. Uh, a quintessential moth or a canonical example is the zeolithic imidazolate framework or ZIF, particularly ZIF-8. So this is uh, uh, formed by zinc ions uh, connected with a two metal imidazolate linker. So this is the structure forming uh, this moth. And it has a soda light topology. So it, it very is much similar with the zeolite topology. And the cage size is about one nanometer. And the typical preparation routes for moth and films involve different processes such as deposition, uh, deep coating from suspension where you dip your substrate to form the moth and film, seeded growth with the same crystal structure. So you have some initial seeds there lying on your substrate and then you dip it into the solution mixture in the mother liquor. Next is on functionalized surface, such as self-assembled monolayers and gold. So you have your surface mounted moths or surf moths. And then you also have a precursor transformation from solid shell precursors or amorphous layers to have your moth thin film. And the difficulty is that it looks like this more often than not. So it doesn't really look like a film because uh, typical powder preparation methods are not compatible for microfabrication because of contamination, corrosion, and lack of control over the deposition. In 2016, right about when I started my PhD, we have pioneered what we call moth CVD or the chemical vapor deposition of metal organic framework. So it basically is a two-step process. First is we deposit uh, atomic layer deposition of zinc oxide, and then it's followed by the vapor exposure to the linker, and then itself assembles to a moth, the ZIF-8. So from a, a metal oxide, dense metal oxide, it expands uh, to a moth. So it's like, a, the way I describe it, it's like a, a souffle in the oven. So it, it just magically expands in the vapor phase. And uh, atomic layer deposition, it's a sequential reactions of precursors, which are self-terminating. Therefore, we have a very precise control over the thickness because you alternate the, 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 the inorganic precursor, the met metal organic precursor, the zinc and water to have a very, very controlled way of depositing your zinc oxide. And then if you have a controlled deposition of zinc oxide, you also control the deposition of your moth on your substrate, all in the absence of solvents. So practically, it looks like this. In the beginning, we have say a zinc oxide film on silicon and then we have uh, the this tape on a petri dish so like like a sandwich with the uh, linker powder and then we just put it in the oven and then after say 30 minutes we have the the zip a layer here so you can see with sem and afm it's not it's not really very smooth yet so we need uh, an integrated clean room process a large scale reactor to be able to convince the semiconductor industry that our moth can actually be deposited uh, on a large scale. So we have this uh, vapor phase deposition of large area moths, which is uh, one of my the first parts of my uh, PhD. So basically, it's just a large area wafer where we deposit uh, the zinc oxide and then we deposit the linker in the step two. So all this in a single piece of equipment. And then we also have in-situ metrology tools. So what you see here is uh, in-situ ellipsometry. So it's uh, an optical technique where you shine uh, light and then you detect the response of, of that uh, light uh, with the interaction on the surface. So we studied the growth 
of the metal organic framework and sit to inside our reactor. So there's a lot of factors um, contributing to the optimization of the final recipe, but let me just enumerate you the salient points of this process. First, we have discovered using our in situ techniques in combination with complementary exit characterization that MOF CVD is segmented in growth stages. So we have identified three different stages, A, B, and C, and we have this sigmoidal curve in in situ ellipsometry, which is typical in crystallization processes. So we have correlated it with AFM, and then we saw that in the first stage, there's not much features. Stage B, there's some crystals, crystallites starting to appear until it stitches to a smooth pinhole free film. This is what we want. And we attribute these steps into link reabsorption, reaction, and crystallization. We have corroborated these results with other techniques such as FDIR. So you have the stage A, B, and C. And the FDIR, which is what we use to kind of verify the chemical information on the surface, and it shows that it's already ZIF-8, but it is not yet crystalline until stage B as shown in the diffraction patterns, so the grazing incidence uh, X-ray diffraction. So we have first an amorphous component on stage A that only crystallizes during this sigmoidal jump in the in situ ellipsometry. And we also tested for porosity, and we have seen that, uh, yes, it is porous, crystalline, and nice film. So properties, property-wise, we're good. We have also uh, investigated the effect of temperature. So this is the, the cartoon of my reactor on a side view. So it's a, it's a cross-flow reactor. So the, the precursors come from left and then it delivers to the right. So it's a viscous flow reactor. We have observed that uh, if the temperature is uh, uniform, then there's no deposition. But if the substrate is colder and the walls, the top is hotter, say at 150 degrees, and the base where the substrate is, is at 80 degrees, we have successfully grown or transformed the zinc oxide layer into ZIF-8. And this just uh, implies that the transformation from the oxide to the MOF is actually limited by the linker adsorption. And this has parallels with the chemical vapor deposition of polymers. Third is that when we uh, added humidity in the chamber, we have seen that, we have observed that we don't have the sigmoidal curve anymore, but instead we have this accelerated growth in incidental lipsometry. And in the AFM images, we have seen that the progression of the morphology is also different. And uh, we attribute this to the fact that humidity accelerates the crystallization process from zinc oxide to ZIF-8. And uh, increasing the relative humidity also affects the morphology. So the higher the relative humidity, the rougher the, the ZIF-8 film you have in the end. So, uh, for, for some applications, uh, the manufacturer or the, or the customer would prefer a very smooth film. So we have to take into account the relative humidity inside our chamber. Uh, as I've said, temperature is very important and we have created this MOF CVD window based on a series of experiments where we, uh, see, where we uh, investigate the growth rate as a function of temperature. And there is an optimum temperature uh, to grow metal organic frameworks, uh, thin films using CVD process. So if it's too high, you have this, yeah, small crystallites, which suggests that the, the transformation is not really fully, uh, it, it, it was not fully converted, pr primarily because of the, of the linker desorbing from the surface. If it's too low, the temperature, there will be too many linker molecules or the ligand will stay too long on the surface, thereby creating these uh, chunks of, of MOFs. So the, the delivery of the linker is balanced by the temperature. Uh, another uh, point is that mass trans 
port plays a role. So as I've said, it's a cross-flow reactor. So this is the inlet and this is the outlet. So this is the, the large area wafer where we deposited the moth. And uh, so the, the flow dynamics is not really very uniform. So we have uh, fabricated a diffuser ring where we kind of equalize the flow in the inlet and the outlet to achieve a more uniform coating. So this is a, a 200 centimeter wafer, which is standard in the semiconductor industry at the moment. And of course, uh, we have also tested the, the, the uniformity of the, of the film. So what you see on the top is a representative uh, film of the optimized recipe. On the left, it's a conductive AFM and the white spots correspond to the pinholes in the layer. So if the recipe is sub-optimized, you will see that there's a lot of holes, which means that the film is not uh, defect-free. This technology enabled us to access to uh, different routes, which was impossible using solvent-based techniques, such as deposition and high aspect ratio structures, patterning, even to the very, very high resolution pattern, and we can achieve that now. And different applications. So one is uh, for low-key dielectrics. So Moore's law says that uh, yeah, the, our device will have more and more components, meaning the metals uh, in between uh, the interconnects will become closer and closer. So we need an excellent barrier to be able to improve our device performance. And we believe that MOFs will really uh, be an excellent candidate as located electrics. So we first deposited the precursor conformity on, on these metal patterns and then convert this into vapor phase. And you see that it's um, fully uh, covering all the surface conformally because that's, that's what we want for, for these structures. And what we saw is that our K value is around 2.4. Uh, what we have in the industry is around three. And our target for the next 10 years in the roadmap is around two or less than two. So we're almost there in that range. If we improve our, our film properties a bit, we will push it lower and we will have more efficient devices. So this is a compilation of the different materials. So you can see that our, our moths are within the optimal zone. So this is industry standard, the pure silica zeolites. And this other materials are mostly demonstrated on a lab scale. So we were the first one to demonstrate this on a large area uh, substrate. Another application is for gas sensing. So uh, the, the moth film is porous, it's like a sponge, so you can chew the, the holes of these moths to a certain uh, target molecule you want to detect to enable very, very sensitive and selective gas sensing. So for example, you have your traditional oxide sensor. So the response on your uh, target analyte is very, very, uh, not very sensitive, but once you convert that zinc oxide into zip 8 into a moth, you can see that the response dramatically improves. So we believe that we could uh, use this for early diagnosis of certain types of diseases by monitoring volatile organic compounds on breath. So some studies have shown that some VOCs, the levels of VOCs can be attributed to early signs of, for example, lung cancer. So that would be, have, that would have a very promising uh, future in, in, in medical device applications, for example. Uh, to prove the robustness of the process, in my PhD, I have optimized different materials as well, not just on zinc, but also on copper-based moth. And of course, the corresponding characterization uh, and optimization of the protocol. So you have your XRD, your in-situ ellipsometry, and of course, imaging. Uh, with this, I would like to conclude that the chemical vapor deposition of metal organic framework is a robust, reliable process that enables applications and new formulations and has been demonstrated as an integrated clean room process ready to be adopted by the semiconductor industry. It's reproducible across a wide array of precursors and applications in electronic devices is one of our target uh, niche. 
such as locate the electrics and gas sensors. So with this, I would like to thank everyone for staying till the end of this uh, parallel session and uh, we'll be very happy to answer some of your questions. Um, thank you, Alex, for that uh, wonderful presentation on MOFs. I, I think next to graphene, uh, MOFs are classified as uh, so wonder materials, right? They, they've um, been very so, yeah. famous or very popular in the chemistry community in the past decade. All right, let's entertain questions from the audience. Um, you have a question from Nathan. Hello, first of all, I'd like to congratulate you on this fabulous work. What are your future plans for this research? Do you have uh, plans or partnership with uh, IMEC? Yes, that's a very good question, Nathan. So the, the reason why I am working with IMEC is that they have production facilities uh, for not just for 200 millimeter wafers, which is industry standard, but also for bigger ones. Uh, what we are doing at the moment is to comply with certain uh, requirements of our customers. So at, at IMEC, we work with uh, industry partners such as Samsung, uh, Taiwan Semiconductors, Intel, and they really want new materials in their devices. And in order to do that, we have to comply with their requirements. So number one, it's solvent-free, so that's also a check. But we, we also want to test the reliability of the films if it survives the next processes. So at the moment, we're doing these tests and hopefully by the end of the year, we will be producing our first sensor on a large scale uh, wafer, a large scale production. Thank you. Now we have the second question from Marge. Uh, hello, Alex. Thank you for your presentation. Um, May baka lang na miss ko um, um part ba ng study mo yung um thickness ng films na dinadeposit sa electrodes for sensors and uh, the, uh, the yung other devices mm -hmm. Yes so, ma'am so yeah sorry So na, na present mo din siya parang um ano yung typical na film thickness for the applications that or you're doing. Thanks, thanks, Mom Marge. Nice to hear from you. Uh, so the, the thickness, uh, so it's a transformation from oxide to, to MOF. So the thickness of, of your MOF will rely on the thickness of your zinc oxide. So we have calculated the, the expansion factor. So for the zinc, so by calculating the zinc density on zinc oxide on NZ8. So there's a 17 time expansion. So if you deposit one nanometer of, of zinc oxide, you will get 17 nanometers of, of uh, zip A. But I also have a study where I do a layer by layer approach where I could actually deposit metal organic framework thin films on the unit cell precision. So I could deposit one nanometer at a time. For applications in sensing, so typically, you don't need a lot of film. Uh, you, on our tests, we, we were able to do sensing on 20 to 30 nanometers of film. And for, uh, say for example, for low dielectrics, this has to be thick, but the catch is it has to be conformal. So only the vapor phase method could be used uh, to do that. So to answer your question, to control the thickness, we control the thickness of the zinc oxide first. And to go to the precise thickness, we use a different method, which we call molecular layer deposition to really deposit on the nanometer precision because some manufacturers would want, okay, I want 36.7 or 38 nanometers. So if you rely on the expansion factor, you're going by luck. But the, the catch is this could be integrated. So you deposit, say, 70 nanometers first, and then you correct with nanometer precision. So that's how we uh, control the thickness. 
Thank you. A follow-up question lang. I mean, in terms of the method, so, um, depende sa application yung method na ginagamit mo. Pero, for instance, kung magsasuggest ka sa Philippines, it's, is it just layer by layer for now? I think, uh, for, for, for example, for, for our, our market, yeah, our target market for now is uh, the semiconductor industry. Of course, that's also very applicable in the Philippines because we have a lot of manufacturing of we have a lot of fabs there actually but from a, a service or a social service i think uh, one of the uses of moss is for adsorption water adsorption for example so there's a lot of research going on uh, not from our group because we're mostly working on films but they have these powders where they build these uh, machines full of moth powders in in remote dry regions but has but it's very uh, the, the relative humidity is very high, so they use it to capture water and condense the, this water that's at Sorbonne de Pores for drinking uh, water applications. And of course, a lot of, uh, since this is like a sponge, we could also do, use it for carbon capture, for example, and even for, for medical applications such as targeted drug delivery because you can encapsulate your drugs on this on this uh, metal organic framework uh, set unit cells for for yeah for these kinds of applications. Salamat. Welcome, ma'am. Um, Alex, just a follow-up question to the to your answer earlier. How, how different is uh, molecular layer deposition relative to atomic layer deposition, where you control the the thickness by controlling the number of cycles? Yeah, so sir, that's very, it's indeed a very good question. Let me just go back to the slide where I talk about atomic layer deposition. So, so here we deposit, uh, yeah, here, we deposit zinc oxide by atomic layer deposition. That's, that means alternating water and the ethyl zinc pulses. Then we build, say, three nanometers of zinc oxide and then you convert it to moth by exposing this film to the linker. In the molecular layer deposition, what we do is we convert this initial layer immediately. So one layer of water, one layer of, of, of uh, diethyl zinc, and then expose it immediately to the linker. And we can grow uh, yeah, very, very thin layers of moth. But of course, the nucleation and growth is different. So we have to do some, some other uh, tweak in the protocols, such as humidity, temperature. So to, to make sure that we grow a film and not islands as what we typically get for, for very, very thin layer, for example, for, for the position of platinum nanoparticles or platinum films. For the very thin layers, they have islands and the very low cycle. So we want to prevent this, at least for our applications. Thank you, Alex. Um, for our I'm last welcome. question. Oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Hi, Alex. Yes, um, Hi, thank you for your talk. Very interesting. Um, I see a lot of models here. Um, I was wondering if uh, molecular modeling is part of your workflow and mm -hmm. um, what, what models or what methods do you use if uh, it's part of your mm -hmm. workflow? So, sir, but unfortunately, molecular modeling is not part of my work. But I took some CHE one three one concepts from from you, <laughs> and then I took it with me. So I, I've shown some modeling work on uh, non steady state uh, uh, flow and a viscous flow reactor and heat transfer modeling as well for the reactor. Uh, there were uh, some research groups working on this, of course. They start from also a very low, low molecular level uh, surface reactions. So you can see that how this molecule attacks this, steric hindrances, thermodynamics. So are they, yeah, are, do we, will we have a chemical reaction based on their thermodynamics? And of course, yeah, if the molecules are attacking on, from different directions. And of course, they also do large scale. So combining that molecular uh, knowledge to reactor scale simulations to have a very, very big picture of, 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 of the process. But to answer your question, there has been no modeling yet on the chemical vapor deposition of metal organic frameworks, but for atomic layer deposition, 
there are a lot of research groups and, and of course, you know, that this is a PhD in itself. But I would be very interested to, to do or to know some basic concepts and going back that would have saved me a lot of time in my protocol optimization. So this, this information will be very valuable for, for, for this kinds of research. All right. Yeah. Uh, I hope we can collaborate on future research regarding this. Actually, and probably then, Dr. Sir Joey's lab. Kasi mas sila yung sa, sa gantong uh, simulations. Anyway, congratulations. Thanks, sir. Okay, for our last question, um, we have a question from our YouTube uh, viewer, uh, Jake. Uh, hi, Alex. Thank you for your presentation. May I ask if uh, for people who are interested in pursuing the same research niche as yours, what skills do they need to develop? Thank you. Yeah, so when I came to the lab, uh, one of the things that, uh, that, that made me get the position is actually my chemical engineering knowledge. So I, I joined a group who are experts in using Erlenmeyer flasks and, and, and doing wet synthesis. Uh, I didn't know anything about MOS, but uh, when I came in, I brought that knowledge with me to have a better, um, yeah, but bit, uh, more relevant contribution to the group. So I think my advice would be uh, use the knowledge you've gathered in your career and in your education and keep an open mind for interdisciplinary work. And that interdisciplinary work will make your research more relevant. So if I didn't come in, uh, well, if someone without a chemical engineering background, for example, came in, then it would have been more difficult to address this mass transport issues, thermal gradient and such. And along the way, I've also learned a lot of things such as inorganic synthesis, also high energy physics. So I've been using a lot of particle accelerators for my raising incidence XRD measurements. So, so that allowed me to grow as a researcher and not only focus on, on, this, on this topic, but also yeah, having this open mind and, and learning and also imparting what I've learned. Right. Uh, once again, thank you very much, uh, Alex. So Thanks that ends our, our little session this morning. Uh, 